I really hope that COVID's behind us right now because it doesn't sound like you can stand to be quarantined with your husband. Anymore. I'll pray for you on that one. You know, several years ago, Dan and Jan came to me and uh, they wanted to partner and help me out with something. Well, I have a lot of people that do that. And not everybody follows through with it. So they came to me. I'm like, yeah, that would be great. Uh, don't hold my breath. But when they say they're going to do something, they do it. And here we are. How many years have we been doing Nine. Nine, Nine. Nine years later. Yeah. Nine years later. And uh, I got a great partner here in Vicki. You know, Vicki and I have known each other a very long time, too. And uh, she always listens to my harebrained schemes. You know, I came to her and said, hey, Vicki, this is what I want to do. I want to have a drug re recovery initiative program. And I want to remove that stigma with regards to law enforcement. And I want people to know that they can come to us for help. So if they are suffering from addiction and they want help, they choose to have help, to get help, that they can walk up to any one of my deputies on the street. They can call us to their location. They can walk into any one of my substations. And they can say, here, hand over their drugs and say, I want help. And we will take them to Vicki to get that help. No charges filed, the, the drugs will be destroyed, and they're on their way to recovery. And then we got that program up and running, and it's been fairly successful, and then I came to another way, with another scheme. I'm like, listen, we got a lot of people out there, we get a lot of calls for service. I don't know if you guys know this, but I run the largest addiction recovery and mental health facility in the county, did you know that? <laughs> yeah, it's called my Charlotte County Jail. <laughs> I don't want that. So I came to Vicki, I'm like, Vicki, I would like to do a co-responder unit. So we have a specially trained deputy and we got clinicians that go to calls for service and they go to these calls for service where there's addiction or mental health issues going on and we get those people help. And further than that now, we're actually seeking out those people that we know are out there that need help and we're working with them and we're working with their families to make sure that they're getting the help and they're following up. Because that's a big thing. We can get somebody in, but to get them to follow up. So when we don't hear from them, we're knocking on their door saying, hey, how you doing? What's going on? And it's been very successful. And our IRIS team is going to be expanded even bigger here in the very near future. Um, so I'm very excited about that. And you know, your donation here today, you coming out and playing and having a good time, that money is going toward our addiction recovery program. It's helping people so nobody gets turned away, no matter their financial status. So I thank you for that. So I'll turn it over to Vicki now. Hi, I'm Vicki Scanlon. I'm the CEO of CBHC. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you, I couldn't have said it any better about our Archways and Dan and Jan and now Emily. And all of us over the past several years have been through either some big T or little t trauma, right? Yes. Amanda spoke of it. And this has really affected our patients the most. And that's why the Archways funding is so important in that we're able to take folks who need services the most and give them those services. And so hats off to all of you. Give yourself a hand for being here today. <laughs> are also cleaning up your messes and dealing with your own struggles right now, post COVID and post Ian. And so we have a very generous community. We're extremely grateful and we don't take that for granted. So thank you again. And um, it's truly an honor to work alongside you guys. Yeah. Perfect.